activity-based costing and analysis. Like I just said, we're going to be just talking about how, what are the different ways we can apply overhead and, and then how do we apply those, those methods, All right? Well, why do we, why do we care about that? Well, overhead, we don't know what costs or what products overhead is assigned to, right? We just don't because overhead, its nature is, it's indirect. It might be your cost accountant in your warehouse that you need. It might be your electricity. How do we know how much electricity went into this bottle of water or went into this custom-made desk or went into this microphone? We don't know. Like we, we, it's, we can't track that information exactly. So how do we, how do we actually allocate? Well, we're going to allocate. We can allocate a variety of ways, and that's what we're going to talk about here. We can allocate all based on estimates. We can allocate on a plant-wide plant overhead rate method, departmental overhead rate method, or activity-based costing method. Activity-based costing is seen as the most accurate, and, and really what we do in practice is use the best practice is a statistical model. You do a regression analysis and determine what is your most, the most correlated with your, your activity most correlated with the cost associated with your products, what's driving your product costs. And then from there, you would then assign that and revise that estimate based on his, history. But most companies can't do that. So they might use some kind of what like we call back of the envelope or really quick calculations to apply as well. If we don't have the modeling ability or the, the, uh, the labor talent to apply these more sophisticated cost-basing methods, but these more sophisticated cost-basing methods are, uh, based methods are better. So, right, we assign overhead costs. We have materials. We know the direct costs go to good, goods and process. I like this slide. Make sure you memorize it. Materials, direct costs go to goods and process or inventory and process or however you want to look at it. We have our labor. Direct goes into goods and process, right? Especially job costing. We know exactly what's going into our goods and process. But the, the rest, we have maybe in materials, we have the indirect materials. We talked about screws are a good example. Indirect labor, that the supervisory costs. And then electricity and all that other stuff that goes into factory overhead. We need to allocate it to goods and process. So that, that cost then eventually can finish goods, become our inventory costs, and we can ac accurately track cost of goods sold. Why do we care about cost of goods sold? Because we need to know if we're making a profit or not and how much profit we're actually making. So then we can pay our investors and everyone can make some money or lose some money. Uh, or know if they're losing money. <laughs> and so assigning overhead costs. So we can assign it three, three real ways, single plant-wide overhead rate, departmental overhead rate, or activity-based costing. I, I don't want you to limit your bucket this for homework. You can think about it this way, but in reality, you can apply it anyway, right? As long as the costs are applied, then you can you could decide to, to apply every even number this and every odd number that. Uh, another cost, right? It, it's really up to your judgment on what the best way to apply is, but know that a best practice is activity-based costing. And in general, these three buckets are the most common ones used, but I don't want you to ever think that you're trapped in this mold. There is a creativity to this accounting on figuring out what the best way to apply costs is. Um, so alternative methods. So the idea the most simple way is a plant, uh, plant wide rate. And so, that, how would we go about this? I'll, I'll do some simple, simple examples, and then I might skip over their, their examples to save us time. But let's say we have $100,000 in overhead. That includes our electricity, all our supervised, anything that's not a direct cost we can't trace. And let's say we know we spent 10,000 labor hours on products that year, or on that month, so 10,000. Well, let's just say $10 per labor hour will apply. On, uh, for the entire plant. So it's volume-based measure based on direct labor or machine hours generally. And we're just applying one rate. It could be on anything though, right? But we're just, uh, the idea is it's very simple. We apply one rate to the whole plant. Now, why could that be a problem? Well, let's say I'm using labor hours and I'm saying it's $10 for labor hour, but let's say one of my departments is using a machine that uses a ton of electricity. And let's say it's like a coffee plant and it's roasting and it's using a ton of electricity and water and you need someone to supervise it. And then the original part, uh, the, the packaging, and let's say the packaging and the, the, uh, the processing of the beans or, um, or so whatever it might be, let's say those don't take any labor. 
well, what this, uh, they don't take any, they don't have any costs, but maybe they use a lot of labor. So maybe like someone has to sort the beans, inspect them, but there's no electricity. There's just that guy who's a direct labor component. If we're allocating on direct labor, that roasting department might not get any allocation, but then that individual will get a ton of allocation because he's putting a bunch of hours in and we're not getting an accurate track by department, right? Because we're, we're saying the roasting department isn't using any electricity, but it's using all of it. And then we're saying that one guy who's investigating is using all the electricity when he isn't use, he's using barely anything. So that's the first issue. So then people, we go and say, okay, what's the next best? Well, maybe we can do it by department, right? And that's what this department rate is. That kind of removes that issue of, well, let's say that that guy who's sorting it out, the inspections is being allocated all. Well, we'll say, okay, let's do the electricity uh, by department. So each rate, so we'll know that, okay, the volume-based measure, well, let's do it by direct hours by department. We'll say, well, we know we have $10,000 in cost and we know that one, uh, the, the gym's department, that we still get a very similar issue, right? Instead of us just applying based on hours, machine hours, now we, we still are applying the electricity, but on the department, we know that, okay, gym is still gonna get over allocated. Uh, here, here, we're doing the whole, like, the whole overview of the entire plant, we just assume and, and apply, but here we're looking at, maybe we'll do a second rate. So maybe gym now, uh, we'll say, no, gym doesn't really, that labor hours aren't indicative of it. Maybe we'll just look at machine hours, like how often the, the chain is rolling. And so we'll, we'll look at, okay, for department X, we'll say you do machine hours and we have machine hours of 5,000 hours. And, and then we have 10,000 hours in department B for, um, for our, our roasting department. We'll try to apply some kind of hybrid mo model and say, well, then we have 100,000 divided by a total of 15,000 hours, and we'll try to apply it that way, uh, or to come up with different rates for the labor hours and different rates for the overhead. We can mess with it in different ways. But activity-based costing, we're gonna say, well, the activities really drive the costs. So for the guy in inspections, it's gonna be labor. For roasting, maybe that's actually water or electricity. For packaging, that might be machine hours. And so we'll look at each of those departments and break them up by the activity that most likely drives the cost in order to figure out uh, factory overhead. 